Jesus begins to reveal the place of government. You see, the system that was operational in the Old Testament was called the system of the law. And the idea of the law is an outlet through which the authority of God can be made manifest. Because if God cannot exercise his authority, he cannot fulfill his divine purpose. For instance, if there is someone on the streets that you find and maybe God opens your eyes to see that the, the individual was ordained to be a mighty evangelist that will bring revival to Europe. And if by any means this would be evangelist has not yet met with Jesus, there is no basis upon which God can exercise his authority over the life of that individual. Even though his destiny is valid, his ordination is valid, there is no basis of fulfillment if God cannot exercise his authority over his life. Now, so the idea of government is a system by which God can exercise his authority towards the actualization of his divine purpose. And if God doesn't have as much as that outlet, his purpose concerning your life will never come to pass. So he reveals the law as a system of achieving government. That's the context. You see, when we go into the New Testament arrangement, Jesus is trying to make us understand that the standards of God are not reduced in the New Testament arrangement. In fact, if you study the New Testament properly, you will find out that the New Testament situation is more more difficult to accomplish than the Old Testament situation. For instance, in the Old Testament, if you looked upon a woman lustfully, it was not a crime. So you could lust. There was no charge for lust. And may the Lord give you understanding. Amen. But you see, in the New Testament, you will find Jesus operating, especially in the book of Matthew, in the capacity as a, of a law giver and he seems to modify the position of the law and entrench greater depth which makes it more difficult to accomplish in the flesh and the reason for which he had liberty to do as much is because in the new testament god makes the resources available for you to have capacity to prosecute his will now the problem with the Old Testament arrangement was that God revealed his ways, revealed his requirements, but he never provided any support by which you could find capacity to fulfill the things God expected. The entire arrangement of the Old Testament is to bring us to a point of humility where we understand that we are incapacitated in as regards furnishing the expectations of God then when you are in that state of humility, if God decides to provide a solution to your problem, each and every one of us will jump at it. So the Old Testament situation is to bring us to a point of absolute humility, to acknowledge our incapacity and our insufficiency so that we will wait on God for grace. You see, in grace, the law is not adjusted in grace, the requirements of God are not adjusted, but God supplies the empowerments for us to be able to live up to the expectation that God requires of us. So the subject that is unveiled here is the subject of government. And you will notice, are you with me? According to the presentation in scripture, the individual that qualifies to actually instruct men in the issues in the things of the operational system of God's government over our hearts are individuals that have walked under the influence of that government themselves. Are you there? 
please stay with me. The, the, the presentation is going to be a bit complex at some point. So just stay with me. It says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. It means this guy does not recognize the government of God that is enshrined in the word of God. He doesn't recognize it. So he lives outside of the influence of this government. And because of that state of lawlessness, he might also become an instructor to encourage men also to forfeit that government. The Bible says just in case there is someone in the kingdom of God that sustains this posture, that individual is going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. I just want to draw our attention to the fact that in the kingdom of heaven there is rank. There are actually 12 things about the kingdom of heaven. And it will interest you to know that only Matthew mentioned that phrase in the entire Bible, kingdom of heaven. And Matthew mentions it 33 times, making Matthew the book of the kingdom. Yeah, yes. So, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not the same. Right? So Matthew sees Jesus as a king. So it's a textbook for the kingdom. And it shows us how kingdom people operating under God's government relate with other people. How kingdom people operating uh, under God's government relate with money, financial matters. How kingdom people relate with everything that is in the in ecosystem of this region of our pilgrimage. And how we are supposed to relate accurately under the influence of the government of God. Uh, the definition of accurate Christianity can actually be found in the book of Matthew, as I realized through my studies. According to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, which is supposed to be a documentation of the kingdom lifestyle. Oh, I'm threatened by time. <laughs> It's a documentation of the kingdom lifestyle. How people under the rule of heaven are supposed to order themselves upon the face of the earth. And we have a grand and executive summary for this matter. That the kingdom man, the kingdom woman, is supposed to be mercifully kind towards others. That is, in relating to others, we relate from a standpoint of great mercy. Because the world is falling. A kingdom man is supposed to be secretly pure towards God. Not a public display of the psychology of purity. But a secret intercourse, a secret level, a secret loyalty to God. So, so see, a kingdom man is willing to be viewed in a bad light just because he wants to keep and contain his communion with God. He is willing to risk that. That people see him in the wrong perspective just because he has something going with God he cannot lose. Are you with me? Now notice this guy, um, Joseph. Potiphar's wife was making an advance towards Joseph. There was nobody in the room. Right? And we were never told that Potiphar had a son, a child. It was as if barrenness was looming in the household and if that guy had something to do with that woman she would have pressed for adoption and that would have meant that this guy would have cleaned out <laughs> but you see see the the psychology of Joseph was that he preferred to be in alignment with God than to be in alignment with Potiphar's wife so you will find out that the secret of Joseph's life was that God was with him because he made a choice to deliberately align with God. So even when he went to prison, the Bible said he prospered. Have you heard that the prisoner prospered? Now, you are not aware that there are different ecosystems in the prison. The ecosystem he found himself because God was with him Meanwhile, the first miracle was that when Potiphar discovered or the allegation of rape 
came to Potiphar's hearing, instead of ordering an execution, he sent him to prison. He was bought for money. And then he goes as far as touching his own. No, I will not send him to prison. If he's, if, I will not send him. So he, he, he sent to prison, which is an indication of the fact that God was with him. He went to prison. Instead of him doing hard labor, he became a supervisor because God was with him. See, so he was willing to be secretly pure in the eyes of God. So mercifully kind toward others, secretly pure toward God, and righteously strict towards himself. Yeah, that's the description of Christianity in the book of Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter 7. Meanwhile, the reason why I read this scripture, I felt this was the clearest scripture in the entire Bible that seems to present uh, the fact that there is ranking in the kingdom of God. And you will know that the major undercurrent of the ranking that is captured in these three scriptures that we just read is alignment under government of God because that's the only way God can accomplish his divine purpose through your life when you allow him exercise his authority over your life so there is ranking in the kingdom of God we are, please help me tell your neighbor we are not the same so all our brethren in Croydon we are not the same our brethren in Canary Wharf we are not the same are not the same we operate from different orbitals in the realm of the spirit so my message this morning is to show us how to gain mileage in the spirit how to gain rank how to advance in the progression that is intended in order for you to rise in the rankings that are captured in the realm of the spirit now the approach I'm going to use is symptomatic uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check the symptoms that find expression in the life of a man that has rank. And then we'll use that to describe what it takes to arrive at that point. Okay, let us start from Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. I came with a catalog, but I think we'll just do one. We'll just do one. Mark chapter 3. We'll just do one point. Mark chapter 3. Um, we'll read from verse number 14. We'll just take the verse of interest. Mark chapter 3, verse 14. And he ordained 12 that there should be with him. And that he might send them forth to preach. He ordained the twelve. He picked out the twelve deliberately. He picked them out intentionally. Are you there? That they might be with him. The first sign of someone that has experienced an increase in rank is that there is a higher dimension of authority. So I need to explain this scripture. Authority. He ordained the twelve. He chose them intentionally. He chose them independently. And the reason for which he chose them, he made it public to them that you guys are going to be with me. So the job description of these 12 he ordained is to be with him. All right? That's the job description. Then you will notice that in terms of sending, that he might send them forth to preach. The word used is might, meaning that that's a probability. That may not be in view. So it is a man, a functionary that has been sent, that needs to be given delegated authority to represent the one that sent him. So you see, authority in the kingdom is intimacy-based, is 
yeah is is intimacy based you you were supposed to be with him and if you have been with him and he decides it maybe he has an errand he gives you the authority to represent him to function in the capacity of representing his interest representing his perspective representing his strategy if you have never been with him you will not know how he does his things so just in case we see a higher dimension of the authority of God it means that in sub, in previous errands that you were sent you were faithful so God is now giving you more rank because he wants to keep sending you so authority kingdom authority spiritual authority how I wish I had 15 minutes to demonstrate authority okay, I think we, we can figure we can factor 15 minutes into this arrangement <laughs> hallelujah it's just like going to a restaurant and then you place an order you meet a waiter there the waiter was there before you showed up the real reason why the waiter is paid is for him to wait so whether you come or not he's already doing his job his job is waiting so it is when you now show up that he's now released to carry out another assignment other than the primary assignment which is to wait he's paid to wait he's paid to stand with a bow tie and smile if there is nobody in the room he's still smiling and at the end of the day he will be paid even if you show up or not because his job description is to wait that's the arrangement in this case you you will learn how to endure the presence of god until you learn how to enjoy it yeah it will it will erode you so much that you start liking it and it will interest you to know that because of the fallen nature none of us naturally likes the presence of god it is the spirit of god that is resident on your inside that likes the presence of God not your flesh and as you are striving to align with the presence of God to be acquainted with the glory of God you will find something so difficult the first system that the flesh has put in place to ensure that you do not maximize your proximity to the presence of God is a certain kind of haste that is locked on your soul now a lot of people come for prayer meetings but I found after organizing prayer meetings for, for decades, I found that 70% of the people that come for prayer meetings don't even pray. They do something like prayer, and we it will pass for prayer for an onlooker. But the guy had this haste in his soul. There's a haste there. And because of that haste, he did not really surrender. So all of that was an activity in the flesh. Yes, because he did not go past that haste that is in the soul and that's why most people cannot lock up and say okay for today I'm, I'm off work I'm going to stay with God that haste will haunt you oh you will now discover that as as logically easy as it is it sounds to be in the presence of God most of us cannot endure it and that is the reason why we have a decline in the number of men that have genuine authority from God because we don't like staying with him. 